Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you the training that you need to tackle projects like this one on your own. This is part of my Formica Laminate series. Today's video is going to be installing bull nose edging on our project. This, this here is our piece that we're going to be working on and we are going to, and you can see that it's a inch and a half MDF with a three quarter inch build up strip for a total of one and a half inches total thickness. This is, uh, I purchased this bull nose edging at um, cabinet, cabinetswarehouse.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. And for some reason, they sell this in inch and five eighths. Let me show you the exact profile so you can see it on the, on the side there. Do you see how it drops down from the from the surface, even though I'm flush up at the top, it's on the bottom, it drops down one eighth of an inch. Why they do that, I don't know. They should be making this in exactly one and a half inches, which is exactly what two three quarter inch pieces of material joined together like this equate to. So whatever, I don't get it. But it doesn't matter. I'm still going to move forward with this project. Now, the first thing that I had to do was I had to get my edges here really straight in order for the bullnose edging to fit exactly uh, straight and flush. The way that I did that was with a router using a full router blade. Now I would have preferred to have used an inch and three quarters or a two inch router blade but my router only has a quarter inch shank so I could the largest bit that I saw was an inch and a half so I had to do it in two passes but I had one hell of a time trying to do it to give you a comparison looking at the back here you notice how much material I took off of this one this is what it's supposed to look like closer to this thickness you can see here how much material I took off while I was routering this section down and I just and I had, um, when I put my build-up strips in here, I put them in with um, glue, with a type bond type 2 glue here in the center. And I also uh, stapled them in that way. Here's my Ryobi router that I used for the project. Here is the router bit that I used. And if you can see it, oh, let me just turn that a little bit. It's, you know, it's a little, it's a little beat up from the uh, crown staples because that's how I put in my build-up strips. I glued it and I also stapled it in place. So when I was doing the routering, when I took those deeper cuts, it was also hitting some of the staples and it's, it was chewing up my bit. So you know what it was? I'll tell you, I did not use the proper tool when I built my project. Let me explain. Okay, so when I was building my project and I had my build-up strips in there and I was just trying to sand them down, the sander that I was using was this, which is an angle grinder with a metal sanding disc. And this tool is, a, it's a good tool and it really works really fast, but when I, when I did it, it also kind of rounded out the corners because it's just a five inch uh, disc going like that. Although, so it worked really fast and I tried to go really, really straight. It still uh, rounded out the corners when I was doing the job. The proper tool, in my opinion, that I should have used, because I don't have a planer, would have been a belt sander. And I should have purchased a belt sander to, to start off with really straight um, uh, edges to my piece prior to trying to put on these pieces, these bullnose pieces, because you, you got to have it like perfectly straight when you do it, because if it's rounded, it will show up in your piece. You have a little forgiveness, but very little forgiveness. So you have to be just about dead on with your project. And because I wasn't dead on and because I did not own a belt sander, uh, because I'm just a DIY, I'm not a professional, uh, you know, 
a laminate person and I don't have every tool in the book, but I should have purchased that tool. But, but I didn't and I tried to use my router to get it straight and it just was a hell of a time and it, it just took off a, a boatload of material. But I was able to get it good enough. So I've already verified all four edges are really, really clean. I have my framing square here like this. So I was able to take my framing square as an example, go like this and then bring this down to your project like this. And it's not perfect. You can see a gap right there, and but it's but it's close. It's it's pretty close. It's close enough for this sample piece that uh, I'm going to move forward with the putting the uh, the bull nose on. So let's get started. All right. So I've got my piece clamped to my work surface. I got my first bull nose edge here, and the second one over here, and I have the corner already made up. So while I'm sitting here and I'm now holding this piece in, piece number one, really firm. Hang on a second there, make sure I'm nice and firm. Now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to mark the back of that piece. So now I know exactly where I should be cutting from. And I labeled this piece number one and I labeled the side profile here number one as well. So this way I will not get confused. So I labeled the side number one and the piece here number one too. So this way I've got that all straight. So now that we have that and we have our mark on our piece, we are now going to take the um, piece here to our chop saw over here and we are going to uh, cut this piece. So here's piece number one and this is where I made the pencil mark and what I try to do is try to keep shaving it down gently until I was into the pencil mark. Uh, and you can see that the cut produced is a pretty clean cut. Okay, so now let me double check this again. Good there. And now let's double check this one. And see this piece is too long. So I need to take a smidgen off of piece number one. Let me go trim it down. Okay, so what I did was is I got my, my saw blade here. I pushed my piece up against it and I put a little pressure on it. Then I lifted the saw blade, turned it on, and when I came down, it took off, I don't know, a 32nd of an inch to a 16th of an inch. Hopefully I was not too aggressive with that technique. Let's see how it looks on the piece. You know, I think I was a little aggressive on that cut, I think. It's very, very, very close, I'll tell you. It is very, very, very close. Okay, I started off by taking a file and I just simply filed the edge here to make sure it was perfectly filed. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my Type On Type 2 and I'm going to glue everything up so I can attach it. Then we'll adhere everything just using packaging tape right there. So let's get going with the glue. Now because my project is not up against the wall and it's just freestanding, I can put clamps here in an effort to um, try to get that glue really good, especially on the corners. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You see that nice squeeze out that I got there? So I only have two of these long ones and two of the short ones, so that's all the clamps that I have. 
All right, that's the project for now. We're going to let this sit overnight, and then we'll come back tomorrow, and then we'll take the clamps apart, make sure we can clean off our glue, and then move on to the next two sides. Our project has been sitting overnight. The glue should be completely dry. I'm going to take the clamps off right now and see what we got. Okay, I've got some dried glue here. Let me get a damp uh, something or another, a sponge or a paper towel to get that off. Okay, I've got it cleaned off, and this is what it looks like. Just give you a nice shot of that. The glue cleaned off nice the following day, so that wasn't the issue. Right here, I'm a little disappointed that the piece dropped down slightly. And now, because of that, let me just pan back a little bit. So the piece dropped down slightly, and I can just barely see a little bit of line right there. So that's a little disheartening, um, even though I tried to really get the piece centered as much as possible. Now, remember, this piece is not exactly um, 1 and 5 eighths. This is excuse me. This is one and a half inch. This piece is one and five eighths. Why they make it that way, I don't know. But here's your end result. You have a one eighth of an inch additional drop down, which makes it more difficult to line up this edge. And that is why I believe my piece has not much. I mean, it's it's practically barely noticeable. But I'm the installer and it looks different than this side. This side here came out perfect. Uh, by the way, I cut the piece, I definitely cut the piece a little bit too short. I was too aggressive on my cut. You really got to watch those cuts and be and be more gentle when you do it or just go slow and take your time. I'm going to cut piece number two now. Now because there's a drop down here and there's the drop down here and I don't want to put a lot of weight on this, I'm just going to use some 2x4s to put the piece on like this so that way there's absolutely no stress on this piece at all. So let's see if we can do this. Okay, I have my cut and I think it came out pretty good. So I'm going to take it and line it up so that it is right there perfect and then I'm going to show you what it looks like over here on this end so you see you're trying to match up that corner like perfect and there it is there it is right there you see that so I got this one pretty pretty good okay so I'm going to go ahead and just glue this one side in right now and then we'll see how well this sets up. Okay, I have absolutely got that glued perfect. I got that edge profile set just right the way that I wanted it to be set. So you can see that when this sets up, that line should just be flawless. So, okay, I got the third section glued on here. So it's just sitting there glued on and that makes three sides that are good to go. I can't move my clamps because the glue is still wet. But I've got my last section here. And what I did was is I put it in here. I matched it up to this point over here. Followed this line over here. Made a mark. And then uh, took that mark and then just brought it down. So I'm going to start cutting this piece here. And I'm going to start cutting it uh, incrementally to try to get it to at least the right size so it's ready to go. Again, I was just too aggressive with my cut. Oh, I'm so disappointed in myself. Look at that gap. I just, I really got to slow it down and just take small incremental cuts. Now that's about a sixteenth of an inch. And I could have been out to right there, um, which would have made it so much better. All I had to do was cut the piece a sixth, not shave it so aggressively, 
and I would have been like right right on. But I was just too 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 much. So I'll try to split the difference and still make it look okay, but I can't do anything until this cures out. So we'll revisit the piece later. Okay, here's the third edge, all glued and dried. Um, it came out pretty good. The I can see a little bit of a black line there in the center section, like right right there. Um, maybe I only have two of the longer clamps. I don't own three of the longer clamps. Maybe I should have three clamped it, um, but I did not. So I got to live with what I got. Anyways, everything else came out uh, reasonably good with a with a fairly good uh, tight top edge. Now I want to glue on the uh, last side, so let's get to it. Okay, there you go. It's all uh, clamped down with reasonably tight edges. We're going to let this project go uh, overnight, and then we'll revisit it uh, tomorrow to uh, give it a wipe down and do some filing and see how well we came out with our project. Okay, all the pieces are on there and uh, gl uh, glued and everything is on there tight. The project did not come out bad except for my corners because I was too impatient. I mean I must be between a 32nd and a 16th of an inch off but you can see how when you do that your corners uh, this one was pretty close here that's like almost dead on in and still it's like not too perfection the edge profile here that looks very very solid look at that so it's so the edges here come out really good the corners are your issues there's a gap right there look at that and then that's just about maybe maybe a sixteenth of an inch now what I am going to do right now is I am going to take my file and I'm going to try to file this down but um, I'm going to have to try to put some filler in there and try to fill that up but it, it's not gonna I don't know it, I'll never be satisfied because uh, you really want to get your cuts I think perfect now that's probably the best corner I have right there so that one there is just about to perfection so uh, and actually the piece wasn't even cut proper I can tell by looking at this uh, right here that this piece here looks a little long um, so if you do this project make sure you pay you just don't rush it like I did on your saw on your chop saw make sure you just take small 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 bites because a 32nd of an inch uh, really 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 matters but let me take a, um, and this is what it looks like underneath, by the way, with that lip. That, uh, because this particular one was an inch and five eighths rather than an inch and a half. So it's not really uh, damning in any way, but there is definitely a, you know, a small lip there. But not really a big deal. Okay, I'm just going to take a file, see if I can't clean up my uh, edges. Alright, so here is your final product after I cleaned it up with the file. The, you can see that the corners are still not perfect. You know, I just got them as best I could. This section here, this uh, this uh, line came out well. I think that that look looks really nice. Uh, the if I I I just focus on the part that I did incorrectly, which would be my cuts. I has I cut my pieces too short and I was too aggressive. This corner here was the best corner and you can see that that's a nice crisp line. But that is the completed piece and just so that you can see it in comparison to one that is with uh, flat edges, that is one with flat edges there and what that whole profile looks. If you're a DIYer these ones here are simply easier to make. This, this requires a little bit more uh, skill in order for you to, to, to make this and it requires a little bit more patience and I was probably too impatient. I should have just been real real gentle on these cuts. One thirty second of an inch really is noticeable when you come down to these edges and that is 
it just takes a lot of patience on your uh, chop saw to just go with 30 second of an inch then test 30 second of an inch and test that is going to conclude this video on installing bull nose edging on a formica laminate uh, top surface uh, please smash that like button down subscribe to my channel Ken training I will catch you on the flip side Thank you.